Bring you this. Our next guest is sounding the alarm on the conditions that he's seen at New York City's four-star Row Hotel, the now home to illegal migrants. So he describes the conditions as a somewhat free-for-all, the rooms filthy, littered with signs of drug and alcohol use, even among minors. And joining us now is a whistleblower and former employee at Row New York City Hotel, one of the largest hotels housing migrants. Now we have Carlos Arellano joining us live. Carlos, good to see you. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. So you worked at the Row Hotel where several uh, illegal migrants are, are housed there. Um, can you tell our viewers what you saw, what you and what other workers have seen? Were, were, they, were they very respectful of the hotel accommodations that they were provided for uh, no cost? What did you see? Well, what we saw was a lot of people who were entitled and ungrateful and i mean can you blame the migrants when the city of new york is giving them everything from daycare services to homeschool teaching to laundry services every day to meals three times a day snacks all all time of the day and you know if i personally if i was being given free stuff i, I would trash the room myself and say hey uh, the city of New York is going to pay for the housekeeping to come back tomorrow, let them clean it. You know, the city of New York is there uh, encouraging this type of behavior, and they don't know uh, that these migrants are basically trashing the hotel to the point where I myself sat in meetings where we talked about we were concerned that the hotel is collapsing. The infrastructure of the hotel cannot take the 5,000 migrants that are in there who are just trashing the rooms every day. Sure. We had problems with uh, toilet water running, and it would cost the bottom, the room on the bottom, the ceiling to collapse. Uh, we've, we've had things like power outages in multiple floors. And those are all signs that the hotel is on, the, on its way down because Mayor Adams had the bright idea of putting 5,000 migrants across 28 floors. Yeah. Hey, you know, Carlos, we've got viewers uh, tuning in from all across the country. Could you sort of describe where this hotel's located? Maybe who frequently stays at this hotel? What kind of area within the city is it? Well, it's a block away from Times Square, mm -hmm. but the migrants during New Year's uh, were, would tell me, Hey, I got a great view of, of where the ball is going to drop. If you want to come watch it from my room, you're more than welcome to. And that would blow my mind because it's a lot of Americans' dreams to watch the ball drop in person, but it's just way too expensive to fly to New York City and to get a hotel during that time of the year. And the migrants would get it for free and they would say, yeah, hey, come look at the view out my window. I could see Times Square and it's just insane that all this is happening. and. The most concerning thing is Mayor Adams is holding a press conference right now talking about the situation. And now he's announcing at this moment that from hotels to school gymnasiums, and now he has a contract with 50 local churches in New York City that are going to start using their, their, their buildings to house the migrants. So your hotels are full and trash, your school gymnasiums, your school buildings are being trashed right now and the church the local churches are the ones who are up next mm. carlos can you talk about your background yourself sir and in, in in seeing again as we take uh take a look here mayor mayor eric adams here live there on the right of your screen there something you were referencing uh just moments ago but talking about your your background and then seeing the the migration process where it's at today, then seeing a city that obviously you love, hotel that you worked at, um, talk to me about that and, and 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 how you how you process that with your background and seeing these uh, migrants and how they're treating your workspace. Well, I've been in this. I was in this business for five years. And I've done everything to work at uh, as a guard, as an armed guard, to working in, with unaccompanied minors. This is my second time blowing the whistle, except the first time my face was covered and my voice was changed. And the difference now is that after doing this for five years, the migrants have themselves come up to me at my face and said, hey, we know the, fe the governments, federal governments, state governments, have given you guys contracts worth millions, 
that money is for us. It's not for you guys. So whatever we want, if we want a new TV because we broke our old TV, you guys have to give it to us. So they they know that the government is giving them everything and they're not shy about it. I would get every day, I would get a migrant in my face, just be more violent and aggressive saying, hey, you need to give me this now because that money is ours and it's not your guys' money. So it's sad because we hear every day the government tell us we don't have money, we don't have money to help you guys out, you Americans, but they're just printing money left and right when it comes to the migrant situation. Wow. Uh, again, sharing uh, these images and firsthand <laughs> accounts. Carlos Ariano, thanks for coming on today. We do appreciate it. Uh, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Coming up.